Hello, marhaba. Welcome, everyone, to the podcast by Shalhoub Group. Today, we will dive into the world of artificial intelligence. And trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this one. Joining me, none other than Michelle Shalhoub, a doctor in artificial intelligence and retail marketing and a visionary leader at the forefront of AI transformation. From predictive analytics to AI-powered shopping journeys or hyper-personalized experiences, Michelle has been pioneering how we can unlock retail technology to the future of retail. So I'm very pleased to have Michelle with us. Hello, and thank you very much for joining us. Hello, Lynn. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time. I'm very happy to be here, very excited. It's a great subject. We're also very happy to have you. I don't know if our listeners got the hint, but you have the name of our founder, Michelle Shalhoub, who founded Shalhoub Group almost 70 years ago. So uh, we're very privileged to have you with us today, to be honest. And seeing that you have a doctor in artificial intelligence and retail marketing is so intriguing to me. So yes, retail is there. You're not necessarily at the heart of the business uh, yet, but very much close to the business. Tell me about your qualification and how you got to it today. So I first started off only doing marketing. And seven years ago, when we started our full 360 digital transformation, I was trying to find a way to link what I was doing to the business. And I decided to go the data route and into AI when people were slowly talking about it. So my initial goal was to, yes, link my studies to the business so I could one day uh, integrate the company. That's amazing. We also hear how, especially in the UAE, they want to be at the forefront of AI. And yesterday I heard in the Inter-Business Women Council in Abu Dhabi that they have the first AI university, actually. So we're going to see more and more academic qualifications for AI, uh, which is very exciting. Which is a very important step, by the way, because um, places like Italy, for example, ban chat GPT of use in schools, where it's as if we decided to ban calculators 20 years ago. What's the point? It's a tool. We need to teach people how to use it, not how to avoid it. Mm. So having a university of AI is actually great to start teaching the younger generations of how to integrate this into their life, but also into their workforce. That's true. I, I don't think schools allow AI yet to, to different yet. levels. And our schools, I know from my kids, they always feel if they see me using AI, they're like, mom, you're cheating. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. This is actually powering my work. It makes me faster, more efficient. So I'm surprised that they have that, but probably come, comes from, from their school as well. That's the, the perception they get when they use AI. And hopefully that will change uh, soon. Is, hopefully that is the aim. That is the aim we're trying to do to make it The point of AI is for it to be accessible uh, and we want it uh, for it to evolve. It needs to be used by more people, but also it's, it's coming. It's here and the whole transformation from AI, this industrial revolution we are getting is happening. So we'll have to adapt to it, even our scholar system. So we need to stop seeing it as cheating and start seeing it as a tool that needs to be used. So our episode today is specific about AI and retail marketing which is your expertise. Tell me a bit more, what is the uniqueness of AI for retail marketing specifically? Of course. Uh, the uniqueness of AI in retail marketing is the insight it can give. AI, when it analyzes uh, consumer behavior in retail, gives us insight we cannot get in any other means. Uh, in other circumstances, AI uses data we already have access to, but in retail marketing, It can access data we as a retailer do not have, but are from the client directly. Could it be their thoughts, their inputs, their behaviors that we do not have means to analyze if it's not thanks to them. So that's how it's different. And is this considered um, in line with data privacy rules uh, in terms of how deep we can go in that? So of course, there is a, a fine line. There is parts that are into the data privacy rules, but they're not into it. Of course, um, if we take the example of every time your phone, when you use an app and it asks you if it can use the camera, and maybe it's an app that doesn't need the camera, and you're like, why? And you just say yes. Most of the times you'll say yes. Technically, you comply with all the regulations because they allowed it to, but realistically, 
you kind of almost trick them into saying yes because they have to accept to use an application, for example. So there's always a fine line between uh, between uh, that, and that is maybe the primary issue with AI is the ethics question, of course. 100%. I think the issue of ethics has always been the case with digital, with social media. And what I find in this time around is that the legal environment is actually evolving faster than before when it comes to AI adoption in general. So just to reassure our customers and our um, colleagues and listeners, we will use AI and we are using AI to actually hyper-personalize and enhance and delight our customers. So tell me a good example of a hyper-personalized experience thanks to AI that we can tap into. Okay. I will give a very strong example that might go over that fine line we were just talking about, but just to (laughs) give an example of hyper-personalization, just one. Um, So let's say you are a makeup brand. And you have an application like so many makeup brands have, where you can use it, use the um, uh, AI to apply makeup on your face, your lipstick, your eyeliners. Okay, everybody has this. And everybody can directly put a purchase uh, button on the app. Okay, that's fine. For example, but an example to confirm this question would be, what if you have an AI behind that camera that reads facial expressions, but also all the tiny micro expressions? So let's say I try on... 10 lipsticks. I don't really try on 10 lipsticks, but let's just say I do it. Uh, And I enjoy, the AI can see that I enjoyed five of them. Let's say we give it a 70% uh, enjoyment rate. Uh, So the AI will remember all of the lipsticks I enjoyed over 70% appreciation. Let's say only by three of them. The AI has the the data that there's two lipsticks I really enjoyed. I still don't. Uh, I really enjoyed but did not purchase. So the next time the person comes into the store, there can be an automatic uh, prompt either on the screen for a discount either to the beauty consultant to try and push for this product, saying that this product has been greatly enjoyed by the consumer but did not purchase it. Okay, wow. So we're kind of blurring those lines of not really mind reading but gathering data that would not necessarily like allow us to, to check by just telling them that uh, to put makeup application, you need to accept that we're gathering data through the camera, which they are accepting, but we're gathering data in the background. Again, we're not doing this. It's just an example. We're gathering data in the background that nobody has. Everybody has data of what you bought. Nobody has data of what you didn't buy, but you liked. But you liked. That's uh, dangerous for me, at least. I'm going to be in a lot of trouble if it just captures the things I like because there are a lot of things that we like when we are just scrolling and and enjoying the experience on the apps. And I like how we are connecting. I mean, this is next level omnichannel, right? This is not just online and offline and store. It's it's really hyper uh, connected now and hyper personalized. So that warrants that also in store, we have those cameras and those technologies as well that are connecting the experience, right? It is, but um, normal cameras would suffice. Uh, it would be a question of just having that uh, specific face recognition AI into the makeup application, which is rather easy to inject. Wow. So cool. it would be hyper-personalization, but then it comes to the data governance of the company to see if it crosses a line we do not want to cross. 100%. And speaking of governance and data, I think that um, the policies around AI are very important these days. And we know that we have policies, whether it's for employees uh, using AI, um, our legal department, actually, they, they use AI to proofread some contracts. And that's great for the business as well. So I think it's going in the right direction uh, to serve organizations and the customers and the industry. So my next question maybe uh, would go around, how do you think organizations can scale or adopt AI for the whole organization? 
course. That is, of course, a very good question for our, for our listeners. Um, well, first of all, we need the right skill set, of course. Uh, when we talk about AI, we always talk about data and skill set because AI will only work through data and a lot of data. The most important is to have good data. So we need the skill set to clean the data. We need a proper, a proper structure for all this data. We need clean data. And then we need the skill set, but then we need the tools as well. Uh, we also need all the AI scientists, the uh, machine learning experts. And then I would say start small. AI works in a good, uh, in a concept of try fast and fail fast or succeed fast. We do something small and something scalable. So we try it and if the concept works, you scale it up. It will not work if you try to adapt it straight away in the grand scheme of things. And of course, having uh, governance for AI and the enterprise, having a chief AI officer, people with accountability, making sure that all the governance and ethics are being properly followed. Okay, so shall we be uh, telling people to look out for a new role at Shell Hoop Group maybe? Maybe, <laughs> indeed. Uh, well then, it's a great thing that you're part of uh, the committee or task force for our AI strategy, which is, uh, I think, putting us at a leading uh, role for retailers and organizations to, to lead AI. Being in the UAE, and I know in the, our leadership conference, we had uh, Naim Yazbek, who's the uh, MD of Microsoft. And he was saying that you all leaders at Chalhoub Group, you're privileged. And actually it's a responsibility that you all have because you're in UAE and in Dubai to lead AI because UAE, it, are leading in AI. They have a vision 2031 for AI. They have a ministry and uh, putting people together in order to lead AI, whether it's for talent, whether it's for technologies or startups. And um, and it's a big responsibility, I think. So let's see what uh, what comes out next year of, uh, of this AI strategy and task force. A lot of exciting things coming along. So, um, Michelle, I would just like maybe to ask you a little bit more on, you know, from what you studied, what you learned, you talked about talents. It seems like we're going to need just like tech and IT and uh, um, digital. We always had like starting with an incubation, a small team, and then it becomes business as usual. Um, with digital, it took close to maybe a bit less than 10 years to upskill marketeers on social digital media and digital integration to the traditional marketing. Do you foresee it to be faster or slower in terms of upskilling them on AI in the future? Um, I definitely feel it will be faster. Mm. I feel like the baselines are already there. Uh, the scalability will happen more exponentially, definitely. Okay, very interesting. So we'll invite marketeers who are actually studying marketing today to make sure that they are AI savvy. Exactly. Right? Amazing. So being in the UAE, I just want to go back to the importance of being here in Dubai. What are, in your opinion, what are the privileges we have being in um, in Dubai as a headquarters versus others? Um, well, first of all, uh, I want to say the UAE is an amazing country. Uh, I've been here for three years and I thoroughly enjoy it. And I, on that spot, I want to say that the use, the ease of use of everything. Uh, we're talking AI here and I want to say uh, having everything through an application, should it be all your electricity bills, your water bills, for example, the Dubai police app and everything far and few in between, going from our Ministry of AI to how they are trying to increase the UAE as the number one AI destination for businesses, increase the use of AI everywhere, adopt new technologies. I find that we're very privileged indeed, and it's like a highway to get to technological advancements in AI because they really um, allow us to go forward here. I mean, I agree with you. Having our headquarters here in the UAE and specifically close to 8,000 team members will help us all because we live it every day, just like you, uh, will help us scale it faster, hopefully. We just... Um finished or started actually a partnership uh, with the Dubai Future Foundation on a project powered by Meta as well, where they are connecting 
startups who are AI focused startups with corporates such as RTA, such as Emirates Airlines and Shell Hoop Group to connect them to a problem statement in the organization and the startups to find solutions for them. So it's it's really cool. Well, we're not necessarily just in marketing. I think in our two problem statements were hyper personalization um, and uh, stock Sub- and chain, ensuring yeah. our supply chains are on track and it's it's amazing how it's the the front end but also the back end yes. that are very important so ai has a lot of potential to uh, to power our business okay michelle i usually when we close the podcast we have fire you know rapid fire questions okay are you ready i'm ready yeah. rapid fire means quick responses or long responses quick and short quick and short yes okay, okay. so I think we've established it, but let's say AI, friend or frenemy? Uh, friend. What's more important, data or creativity? Data. If AI... Do I give a reason? Hmm? Do I give a reason? Or Go do I just for it. Want? Okay, because AI only <laughs> works with a vast amount of data. For example, show an AI a picture of 10 children or 10 boys, 10 girls, he'll not make the difference. Give it 100,000 boys and girls, he'll always make a difference better than a human can. So data number one. Okay. As a communication expert, I would say first data, but then without creativity, the outcome is not going to be good enough. <laughs> Fair enough. That's a, that's a question for me. If AI could redesign your favorite store, what's the first thing it would change? If AI could redesign my favorite store, my favorite store being Level Shoes, uh, it would make it easier to personalize the shoes directly and also have some uh, magic mirrors where we could have our personalized shoes already worn on us through the mirror. So you can see what it would look like in different colors with different kinds of personalizations. Cool. Not taken, Tim. Send it to Level Shoes team. Voice shopping, fad or the future? Probably a fad, I think. Who wants to shop for uh, clothes or makeup when you don't know what it will look like on yourself just with your voice? Okay, so especially for luxury, I think. Yeah, luxury lux- is still very personalized and uh, tactile. AI-generated ads, brilliant or creepy? Brilliant. Okay, that was an easy one. What's one AI tool every retailer needs right now? Facial recognition. Okay. In my opinion. Customer experience or operational efficiency? What should AI prioritize? Operational efficiency. I know you want to say more here. I do. (laughs) I think that uh, if you are more efficient in your operations, you can satisfy the customer first and then head on to uh, customer experience. But to be frank, because there are two different departments, we could do both at the same time. I think that collaboration is what's uh, powering retail today, mm. omnichannel, online and offline, uh, supply chain and the business and customer experience all are coming together. So 100% right. I think we can do them together at the same time. Would so. you like to add any thoughts before we close this beautiful discussion? I want to say a lot of people today fear AI a little bit. I want to reassure people saying that Uh, Most companies and most governments, if not all of them, always try to do it in the most ethical way. And that it is coming, or it is here, but it's always evolving. So it's here, but also coming in the sense that more is coming. And we need to embrace it, should it be in every aspect of our lives. Learning about it, uh, learning about how to use it, uh, learning about how to use it to our advantage, not only as retailers, but also as consumers. And, um, yeah. Well, that's a fantastic advice. I won't add anything to it. Thank you very much, Michel Shalhoub, for joining us and joining the podcast. Thank you all for watching or for listening. As usual, please send us your feedback and tell us any other topics you'd like to hear in the future. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>